Your phone, tablet, and computer can only hold so much data. And so before you realize it, you're out of storage. You could go out and pay for cloud storage, but you'll be paying every month for the rest of your life. You could buy external drives and keep a box full of them like your parents or grandparents used to with floppy disks, but managing all of them is a huge pain. Or maybe there's a better solution, a NAS, something you can keep all your data in and still have quick access to. So that's what we're gonna be trying to do today. We're gonna be taking this NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus provided by today's sponsor, Ugreen, and turning it into my own personal cloud storage, streaming service, and even a smart home controller. Okay, I know this video is sponsored. I'm just giving you a full disclosure there, but that's because I genuinely thought a NAS like this was gonna fit this job perfectly. While this thing only has four bays for hard drives, Ugreen really went crazy with the hardware inside. I mean, it has an SD card slot, HDMI, USB Type-C, a bunch of USB-A ports, and 10 and 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. With all these ports, it kind of feels closer to a computer than a NAS. Finding all these ports for NASs in this price range is pretty hard. So the value is there for sure, especially since they added some pretty nice user-friendly features to this thing, like numbered drive bays, metallic sides, and a magnetic mesh filter for the fan in the back for easy fan cleaning. But Enough about the looks. How am I actually going to use this thing and what can you personally use this thing for? Obviously, to store files. I have a few NASs in my home at this point, but they've all been holding a mix of my personal and work life. Basically, all of my YouTube stuff sat on the same NAS as my personal stuff. You can see where this is going. You probably don't wanna mix your personal and work lives like that. That's not good for a million different reasons. You gotta find that work-life balance. So the DXP4800 Plus is going to become my at-home personal NAS for all things Jimmy minus the tries world part. I love smart home stuff and self-running my own programs like Plex for streaming my own media, Image for photo backups and Home Assistant for smart home integration. And it's nice to have one singular dedicated box that can handle all of that and store all my important files on it as well. That way I know where everything is without having to maintain a million different devices. So let's break down how I'm gonna accomplish all of this, starting with the cloud storage replacement plan. I wanna drill this into everyone's head before we start. A NAS alone is not a backup. If the NAS is the only place your important files are stored and something happens to that NAS, all your precious family photos, they're, they're gone. No matter how perfect the NAS is, something can always go wrong, like a fire, a flood, an earthquake, a hurricane, or even your kids spilling juice on your NAS. These are catastrophic things that you can't predict. So the best practice is to follow the three, two, one rule of data storage. You keep three copies of your data on at least two different devices, as well as keep an offsite backup. Not gonna lie, I've been terrible at following these rules, especially the offsite part. I've been putting it off for a while and I really shouldn't and neither should you, but I'll save how I'm doing all that for a different video. But the DXP48 Plus really is a great starting point to start any NAS journey because it has four drive bays and two NVMe slots for cache or storage. The biggest thing that stood out to me about this device is that, I can't believe this is an issue with some other NASs to begin with, is that they don't force you to use only certain drives. With Ugreen's NASs, you can use whatever third-party hard drives or SSD you're able to shove into this thing. Believe it or not, certain pre-built NAS makers don't allow that on their latest models anymore, which is kind of crazy. How can you tell me what drives I'm allowed to use or not? If it fits, it's it. Okay, I do think it's important to note how many drives you can have in the DXP4800 Plus, because as a minimum, it's best practice to use one of the drive bays to house a parity drive, meaning you don't get to use the space of that drive. But if any single drive fails, your NAS will give you a warning, but keep on chugging. So the more drive bays on a NAS, the better. When you're setting this thing up, the NAS will lay out your options and tell you the impact of whatever decision you choose. For most people, four drive bays is a great spot to be because you can start small with a little room to grow if you need to. Ugreen sent this over with four four terabyte hard drives, which means if I use RAID 5, I will only have 12 total terabytes of storage and all the slots are filled up. Since the DXP4800 Plus supports up to 112 terabytes of storage across the drives, if I were to buy my own drives, which I probably will sometime after this video, I'd really think about starting out with something like two 16 terabytes or bigger hard drives, just to start. That way, if I want more space, I can just buy another 16 terabyte hard drive, slap it in and expand it to get way more room than four terabyte hard drives could ever give me. Is it more expensive up front? Yeah, but it's better than running out of storage space, drive base space, and needing to buy a whole new NAS because of it. That would require taking care of and maintaining two different NASs, and I'd still have to buy more hard drives anyway, which isn't fun. I have a friend who did this on one of his early NASs, and he really, really, really regrets it. I'm, I'm talking about me. 
So there's two NVMe slots for SSDs on this thing. And really it's kind of overkill for just basic storage, but those slots are great if you're doing anything else besides that. So if you need fast random read storage like video editing projects or to even just run your NAS apps off of it. Okay, so let's just say you got this all set up, all loaded up. How well does it perform when connected to your computer? The DXP4800 has a 10 gigabit ethernet port. So it can, in theory, reach a download speed of up to 1250 megabytes a second. If your network and devices connected to it supports it. I made a really good beginner's guide to networking that you can find right here if you wanna learn more about that type of thing. But how much performance can we realistically expect out of the DXP4800 Plus? Well, I'm seeing some pretty good read and write speeds considering hard drives aren't the fastest. This is about how fast I'd expect from them. As for the NVMe drives, it's fast. We are getting faster speeds than the built-in hard drives all around, and we're definitely fully maxing out how fast you're able to read from the NAS, but we're seeing only about 400 megabytes per second for write speeds, which is a little low. And I do think that this is an area of improvement that Ugreen needs to work on because the processor in this thing can definitely handle that faster too. But overall, I think this is very competent for what it is for a lot of use cases too. I mean, this is portable SSD level speeds with parity for something that's shared across your entire network. Okay, since we got the storage portion figured out now, let's talk about self-hosting apps. So self-hosted apps are apps that you run locally on your own machine, which means it's not stored somewhere online like Google Photos or Google Drive. If you think about it, a NAS system itself is self-hosted storage. And so a lot of people run their own self-hosted apps on their self-hosted storage in the name of taking back their data and avoiding those subscription prices. Sometimes they like to run it on a Raspberry Pi, sometimes a Mac mini, or some other small little computer with all the data storage to the NAS. I go back and forth between if I prefer one way or the other. So before I got this Ugreen NAS, I was running all of my self-hosted apps on my Mac mini, but Ugreen makes it very easy to run your own apps or Docker containers. They have a Docker app built directly into the OS and inside that Docker app lives their Ugreen Knowledge Center. And these Ugreen Knowledge Center articles are so helpful. They provide step-by-step -step instructions for a bunch of self-hosted apps to help you get started. And from time to time, I see that these articles do get updated with additional app support. So using these articles, you can quickly get something up and running on these machines without a lot of hassle and time wasted. You have no idea how much time I wasted trying to get image installed on my Mac mini. And yet there's a dedicated guide for the DXP 4800 plus right on Ugreen's knowledge center. And if you do decide to run all of these different self-hosted applications, right on a single box, when something does go wrong, you at least know where to begin troubleshooting. Ugreen also has their own built-in app store if you don't wanna mess with setting up containers and using Docker, like their own Photos app that can help you manage your library and has some pretty cool AI sorting features to help you search through your photos easier. Some of the apps that I personally wanna run are already available on the app store. This NAS is going to be the accumulation of my personal digital existence. And for that, I think having these apps as a baseline and so easy to set up with a guide was pretty useful. All right, so I am using this NAS in a very specific way, but there are so many other ways that you can use it that just keep popping up into my head. So I thought I'd at least bring them up in case you're looking at NASs for something more than just storage. I know I'm not using this for YouTube, but I do wish that a NAS like this existed when I started looking at NASs on the YouTube side, because this could be an all-in-one solution for that. When you use the NVMe drives as a storage pool combined with a 10 gigabit connection, it makes editing videos off of these things feel fast and responsive, almost like it was on my actual computer or like I had an external SSD plugged in. Then when I'm done working on the project, I can move it to the slower but bigger hard drives for longer term storage. This is kind of what I'm doing right now, but just a bit more complex. It's not as streamlined as this. From there, obviously the whole thing could be synced to a second NAS and important files could get synced to cloud services or something. So I think this would be a great starting option for small or mid-sized content creators. Or if you're really into self-hosting, you could store all the apps on the SSD and any content files like your photo library or movies on the hard drives just for faster response times on your apps while still having a ton of space for all of your different pieces of media. And that's how I'm currently using this NAS with my current self-hosted apps. And lastly, since the NAS has a decent chip inside, you can run virtual machines pretty easily off of it too. I mean, at the end of the day, this thing is a computer with upgradable RAM too, so it can do pretty much anything a computer can. Okay, sure, it has been a few weeks of me using this system, but how has it held up so far? Everything has kind of just 
worked as expected. I haven't really had to do anything to maintain it except check for the occasional software updates requiring a restart or just fiddling with my self-hosted apps like Home Assistant because anyone who uses Home Assistant knows your job's never done. Besides that, it's been working as well as you'd expect from a NAS and you can even manage most of the Ugreen NAS's functionality directly off of the mobile app. So I don't even have to worry about jumping on my computer to adjust settings, checking on tasks, and accessing files. But see, that doesn't mean the entire experience has been positive. Ugreen released these NASs about a year ago, and at the time, software in them needed quite a bit of work. But as someone who's been daily driving one of their NASs as my main editing drive, the software has significantly changed in the last year with constant updates. Last year, I commented on how loud the fans on my other Ugreen NAS was, and with the software updates over time, it did get a bit quieter. And with the DXP4800+, Plus, it doesn't make that much noise, it's mainly just the hard drives, and that's really depending on the type of hard drive you have. Overall, genuinely, I'm satisfied with how it runs, and it's been relatively pain-free. But does that mean that you should purchase this NAS for the promise of better future software updates? No, you should really buy products only as what they are today not what you think they could be in the future. But for whatever reason, if you don't wanna wait for them and want more flexibility, and you're not comfortable with their operating system, you can flash a different operating system on these Ugreen NASs without voiding their warranty on the system itself. So you do have the freedom to choose a different NAS operating system if you want to. But as of late June, 2025, I can at least say that they do a really good job at walking you through the steps of getting your NAS up and ready. They tell you the impact of your selections and all the different things you need to know to get started. It's really beginner friendly now compared to what I remember a year ago. Where I do think it's lacking though is some of the more power user type features like continuous two-way sync, backup options, and more cloud provider options, stuff like that. But the core features, they're all here. So that's been my experience with the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus and turning it into my own cloud storage and self-hosted app machine. What do you personally think? Are you looking for a device like this to take hold of your personal data because you became a digital version of a hoarder? Or do you think just staying with the cloud and paying a subscription fee is worth the convenience? How do you use your NAS? And how can I improve how I'm using this one? Leave all that down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time. Bye.